Having tough conversations with clients sometimes is difficult, but sometimes you got to go there. And many agents don't want to go there because they get very uncomfortable with themselves in trying to have those difficult conversations. And there are seven mistakes that agents are making around this one idea of tough conversations. In today's video, we're going to address them. We're going to address why it's important to go there and be willing to have the tough conversation uh, and some mistakes that agents are making and what you can do to overcome that so that you can master this skill and be able to go deeper with clients, be able to meet their needs, and serve more families. There are seven repeating mistakes that I see agents make in life insurance sales, and they all revolve around one area, and that's the area of tough conversations. Tough conversations are often needed in life insurance sales to be effective. And being able to go there with people uh, is a learned and practiced skill that top producers are willing to do so that they can master that area. Nobody loves tough conversations. People generally don't like confrontation. And oftentimes agents see it as confrontation. And it's not really confrontation. Sometimes there's an elephant in the room, so to speak. There's things that have to be addressed. Um, but because they seem challenging, most new agents in particular tend to avoid them because they don't know what to say. They don't know how to broach the subject of this tough and challenging conversation. Others who do not have an issue with having tough, <laughs> tough and challenging conversations are often seen as in-your-face people, and they're just, they just put it all out there, and they seem aggressive. And so some agents may think, well, I don't want to be that person. Who really wants to be that person who's just aggressive, and um, you know, they don't really care what they say? So in this video, I'm going to discuss seven, the seven biggest mistakes that I see agents making and why we need to have these tough conversations. And lastly, what are some effective steps that you can take to become comfortable with wading into that area with your clients and become a top producing advisor? So let's talk about some of these mistakes that agents make. I would think one of the biggest and most recognizable areas that uh, agents are missing on is that they tend to keep things at very surface level. First, they keep things very surface level. And I would say that that is, um, it's okay to start a conversation like that, but you have to listen. Uh, we will address um, the idea of building trust in all of our content. Everything that we put out, we're going to address that. And there's two ways that you're going to establish trust with people. Number one, you're going to have to demonstrate empathy and then establish authority. So when you're demonstrating empathy, it means you have to listen. You have to ask good questions and you have to listen to people to hear what they have to say. That means being present. That means moving beyond just surface level uh, conversation. You have to be willing to ask them why these things were important to them, you know, who they're trying to protect, why uh, that matters. Have they lost anybody in their family? Uh, have they had anybody that, uh, you know, that got sick with cancer or heart attack, stroke? Like, you need to be able to have these conversations with people and ask them how it made them feel. Uh, when you're trying to just keep things up here at a surface level, uh, you come across as being disingenuous and the client is not really connecting with you. Okay, so that's the first one. Uh, first mistake is agents tend to keep things surface level. The second one, second mistake that I see agents making is that they are inattentive to answers and to emotion, emotions that the, the client is actually displaying. Some I've literally been in the home before with agents and something will strike a nerve or a conversation will go in a certain direction and the client will get emotional and they'll start to give an answer. And the agent, because they don't know how to go there and they don't want to go down that road and address this challenging topic, they kind of tend to disconnect and they're waiting for the client to stop speaking so they can get back to checking off the box in their presentation and they're not paying attention to the answers and the emotion. And so my recommendation in this area is that you have to pay attention to your client's responses. Okay? You have to pay attention to your client's responses. 
and uh, you know everything is not always awesome and great. <laughs> and it was so weird. Literally, I'm in a set and uh, we're talking to a client, and they're describing uh, a, a tragedy, a situation that happened to a family member, a sister-in-law. And the agent was so tuned out and tuned in on their presentation that they literally said, awesome, great, and they went on to their next point. And I was just in shock that that would actually come out of their mouth because clearly they weren't listening. They were inattentive to the answer and to the emotion that the client was displaying. So please pay attention, be present. Third, I would say that um, a lack of confidence leads to discomfort. A lack of confidence leads to discomfort. So uh, this this third mistake that agents are making is that they are not confident in what they're speaking about. They're not confident in their presentation, or they're not confident in how to close or the process or the product and how the product can actually help them. And so when they're not confident, they are so focused on what is supposed to be said next. Um, they're not confident in how to open up the application, uh, you know, on their laptop. They're not confident in how to get to the e-app or what they're supposed to complete next or how to get to the banking information or how to make, um, you know, to get to the next step to uh, for the authorization of the application. And they're so focused on what they have to do because they've not properly prepared ahead of time, and that leads to discomfort in the presentation, at least to discomfort in front of your client, and um, it keeps you distracted. Uh, you're not focused on the needs of the client. So my recommendation here is be prepared. Like practice your presentation at home. Practice the transitions. Get with your, your team, uh, your community, your upline, your, you know, your core group that you're working with, uh, your agency, and practice these things. Uh, get in and play with the applications. Know how to open up the application. Know where you put your login and password. <laughs> That's amazing. We get calls from agents saying, hey, I need help with the, with the e-app, and I can't help them. And I said, well, why don't you give me your login and password so I can help you? Well, I, I don't know where it is. I forgot it, and now I can't get my, e, uh, my browser to open at the right page, and you're fumbling around, and it's just not being prepared. Right, you, you have to get into a place where you feel prepared so that you are projecting confidence. Once you have confidence, there is no discomfort. The client will be with you and you'll be present. Um, the next uh, mistake I would say that agents are making when it comes to these difficult conversations, sometimes these tough conversations, is that they're focused on selling instead of listening. They're focused on selling instead of listening. And the opportunity arises for you to have a moment with that family that lets them know that you're hearing them, that you heard them about the tragedy that happened with their brother-in-law or their parents, and they never want that to happen to them. But because you're focused on selling and you're not focusing on listening, you're trying to meet your need, not the client's need. Uh, and... Again, it's surface level. It's being inattentive. It's it's projecting in the wrong direction what you're actually there to accomplish, and you're not listening. The only way that you're ever going to get beyond the external need, that they might need coverage, to the internal need as to why they need coverage and why it's important to them is by listening, by asking good questions and then listening. And so in order to do that, you cannot be focused on selling. You have to be focused on your client. Next, I would say um, one of the things that agents uh, are making a mistake on uh, when it comes to this idea of difficult conversations is that you're uncomfortable with discussing finances. Uncomfortable with discussing finances. Well, you're talking to them, you're talking about this family, about protecting their finances, protecting their assets, protecting the ones they love the most. And in almost every case, whether it's life insurance sales or Medicare, um, health insurance, like it has to do with money. It has to do with finances and money, the investment they're making for the return and what that's going to do for them. And sometimes we're overselling or underselling because we haven't gone there and even asked that person, you know, what they're financially liable for, what they're obligated to, 
what the liabilities are in their family. And because that seems like a taboo subject that you may have never discussed in your home, or people have told you never talk about other people's money, in this situation, when you're with clients, you have to talk about their finances. You're the person that they want to take direction from. So the solution to this is you need to see yourself as the professional in the room. If you went to a doctor's office and the doctor said, do this action, or the nurse practitioner came in and said, I need you to do this, you're going to take direction from them. They're the professional in that moment. They're going to ask you to do some uncomfortable things sometimes when you go to the doctor's office. How many of you have ever gone to the doctor's office and they've asked you to do something that makes you uncomfortable that you wouldn't do in front of other people? And the reason why you're willing to go there with them is because they're treating themselves as the professional. Well, in this situation, you're the professional. And you being the professional as the advisor is about insurance and financial protection for them and their family. So be the professional and understand that you're the person that they want to take direction from. So don't be uncomfortable with discussing finances. For some of you, it may just be that you're uncomfortable about your own finances. You may need to get some counsel about how to best proceed with your own finances, but certainly you're going to be talking about money when it comes to uh, protecting people's families. So you have to see yourself as the professional and give direction as the professional and uh, go there with people. Um, I would say the sixth area where I see agents making a mistake is that they're uncomfortable with discussing life choices. Life choices, like what people are spending their money on. Sometimes you'll see families that they're maxed to the hilt. They've got credit cards uh, maxed. They, they, uh, you know, they have a, a cottage. They may have a home. They have two or three nice cars in the driveway, and yet they're telling you they can't afford this benefit for whatever reason, or you, uh, you know, to, to protect their family or a mortgage protection plan. Or you may be sitting with seniors who are clearly in need of protection for final expenses and end-of-life costs, but you can see what they're spending their money on. Their money is going to things that are completely unnecessary, right? How, how many times have we been in homes where we see giant screen TVs on the walls, Xbox and PlayStations, the latest iPhone 13 or whatever the model is when you watch this video? Um, they have all those bells and whistles. Uh, they smoke. Um, they, uh, you know, they have... They have two or three credit cards open, and they're paying 21% interest, and they're not paying it off, and yet they tell you they can't afford $60 a month for a ten dollars or $15,000 benefit so that their family will have money to take care of their end-of-life costs. Like You have to be able to go there and discuss some of those life choices with people and ask them, what's really their priority? And ask them, say, you, you told me that you care about this, but... At the same time, you're telling me that you can't afford it, when really your affordability is a choice. It's a choice you're making. It's a choice you're making to spend your money on these other things versus the things you say are important to you. They're either important to you or they're not. And you need to be uh, willing to get a little uncomfortable there and discuss some people's life choices. It's okay to go there. It's okay to do that. You know, there's been, there's been many times when um, I've been in situations with clients where I've addressed some of those things. And uh, in particular, you know, one gentleman told me that he couldn't afford it. And I, while I'm with him, I'm literally watching him smoke three cigarettes in 45 minutes. Like every 15 minutes, he's lighting another one up. And I do the math. And I calculate his tobacco cost, his addiction cost. And he tells me that he loves his family. And I say, I think you love yourself more than anyone. Most of us do. But you got one big vice that's keeping you from protecting your family the way you want. And literally, I'm showing, listen, if you just cut back to one cigarette every 30 minutes <laughs> instead of every 15 minutes, you can pay for this. I know it's a bad habit. I know you've gotten into that habit. And you may not change but you're telling me that that's a higher priority for you than protecting your family. And when put in position, when we talk about framing, we talk about the contrast frame. When I am able to contrast what they say their value is with their family and then the value that they put on a cigarette, and I put that out in front of them, 
for the first time, they realize that, yeah, that is a very selfish reason. And then for the first time, they realize that I should prioritize finances toward my family because it is important to me. And yes, I never really looked at it like that before. So it's okay to get uncomfortable and to go there uh, about people's life choices. You can't be too intrusive. Uh, I do want to say that. You can't go too far, but you can certainly address it. And I think top producers do address it. I think the last area that um, agents make mistakes in when it comes to difficult conversations is that they become uncomfortable with silence. This is an area that I think if people could just master this one area of letting the silence work when a good question is posed or when a client is thinking and, you, and the agent can let that silence do its work and let the, agent, and let the client process you can become a top producer. Too many agents are uncomfortable with silence. Here's my challenge to you. Silence is good, is good. Silence is good for tough questions. It's good for emotional questions. It's good for financial questions. Here's what happens when you don't give people uh, the opportunity to sit and process in silence for a minute. You don't give them the opportunity to feel and own that need when you keep talking over it and you've posed a tough question and they're not answering and they're just quiet and you feel like you need to jump in and say more, like let that sit in for a minute. Let them feel it and let them own the need. Uh, it's amazing what that can do for people. When you don't give people the opportunity to, to sit in silence for a minute and think, you don't, give them a, you don't give them a chance to process the information. They need a minute to process the information. And it's okay for you to slow down and, and let them think about that. You know, you can keep moving forward physically with your body and, and your mannerisms, uh, but certainly you're, you're not waiting for permission, but you're posing tough questions and you're letting them process. When you give them the option on which option to choose from, give them the options and then be quiet. You keep doing your thing, preparing to move forward, but let them come back to you with their choice. When you don't give people room for that silence, you don't give them the opportunity to find the words they're looking for. Um, you also don't give people the chance to decide what they can afford sometimes. So these are all things that people need a little time on to process. And when the agent is talking, 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 because they're uncomfortable with that silence, sometimes we're missing these things. We're, we're missing the opportunity for the client to feel and own the need. We're missing the opportunity for the client to process the information. We're missing the opportunity for the client to find the words that they're looking for to respond. We're missing the opportunity to give people a chance to decide what they can afford. So avoiding um, these uncomfortable uh, silence periods in conversations and transitions is a huge mistake. It's okay to let that happen. Silence, remember, is good for tough questions, emotional questions, and financial questions. Let them ponder and let them think about it. In particular, there was a client of mine. I was actually doing a training um, session. I had an agent that, uh, that was doing ride-alongs with me one day, and it was the end of a long day. And we sat uh, in a home, knocked on this door, had a preset appointment time, approximately to come by. When I came by, knocked on the door. There was a gentleman sitting in a recliner um, at the far end of the living room with his back to us. And it was a screen door was open. It was in the summer. It was a nice, cool evening. And he said, come on in. And we went in and sat down. Well, this guy, he, he was, I don't know what was wrong. I mean, we had a preset appointment and I addressed why I was there, but he was not opening up. It was, it was just a very tough sit. And my new agent that was sitting watching, he was I, I could feel him getting fidgety because he was uncomfortable with the response of the, the client, the prospect of client. He wasn't a client then, but he was a prospect. And uh, he was giving me short answers. They were curt. They were, uh, you know, they were just succinct. And he was wanting me to get on and, and give him the price. And But there was something clearly that was going on, like he was showing disdain or some type of emotional distress, but he wasn't opening up about it. And I knew I had to go there with him. 
and uh, he was like wanting me to proceed. And I knew once I delivered my pricing, at that point, it's um, it's a probably a no. He's probably like, oh well, let me take it and think about it, and I'll get back to you. Um, so before I proceeded, I did not give him the pricing. I laid my material down. I laid down. Uh, we had a small presentation that we were walking him through, and laid that down. Laid down the iPad, and. And I just folded my arms and looked at him, and that got his attention, just that one move, because I, I slowed down, and I looked at him, and I said, Michael, um, clearly there's something wrong, and I don't know what that is. Uh, I know you set this appointment with me. You'd requested information about these plans for your family, for your kids, and I've heard you talk about how important your kids are to you. You've responded that you want to make sure that they're protected, but it seems as if I've done something wrong, or there's something that we're not discussing, and I want to make sure it's not anything I'm doing. Um, I can certainly leave. We don't have to finish if you're uncomfortable with me, Um, but I help people all the time in your situation. I help people protect their family at the worst time of their lives emotionally, because at the time when they lose you or lose the people they care about the most, like the last thing they want to be worried about is the money that's associated with that. And most people would like to prepare for ahead of that, which you've told me that you want to do. However, there's there's something going on here, and I, and I don't know what it is. And all I need to know is, do you want us to leave? Would you like me to proceed? But if you'd like me to proceed, I need to know what's bothering you so we can have the conversation so I can address that. So I certainly don't want to upset you further, and I certainly don't want to just give you prices and you say you want to think about it, and then we leave and never hear back from you, because I would not be doing my job if I did that. And he just sat there and looked at me, and it was quiet for like 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And do you know what 20 to 30 seconds of silence feels like in that moment? My agent over here, I could feel I could feel the new agent like starting to squirm, like he only had to move a couple times because it was dead silent in that room. And Michael looked at me and said, well, my dad passed away a few years ago, and we thought he had a policy. He bought it from an agent like you, and we thought he had a policy, but when, when he passed, we couldn't find anything. We couldn't find anything, and he had no coverage. We don't know what happened. We don't know if he would, you know, we didn't know what was going on. And my sister, who's well off, called and said, we have to take the take care of the arrangements for dad. And my mom, she didn't have much money. She's just living on Social Security. And my sister called up and said, I need $1,500 from each of you. Um to uh, put toward the funeral. And it was everything my mom had to come up with the money, and really it was everything I had to come up with the money. But we did it, and we got it ready, and we went and took care of it because my, apparently my dad had not. And um, we got home from the funeral at like 4 o'clock that afternoon. He said, my dad's body was not even cold in the ground. This was his exact words. I remember, like, chilling. My dad's body was not even cold in the ground. He said, my sister called back and said she was going to need another $1,500 from each of us to finish the payment. And we were like, what do you mean another $1,500? We don't have that money. And she laughed at us. She laughed at my mom and I and chuckled and said, did you think we could take care of this for $4,500? This funeral is $10,000. We need $3,000 from each of us, and there's still some extra costs. So I need another 1500 by tomorrow. And he said, I just got so angry. I got so angry, number one, that my dad hadn't taken care of it, number two, that my sister was doing this, and we didn't have the money and the pressure that it put on us. And he said the way she talked about it and the way she took control and then spoke down to us that we didn't have it prepared for and that she was having to take care of dad's mistake and... He said, it was just bad. He said, I haven't talked to my sister in years. He said, that's how bad it was. And he said, we come to find out about a month or two later, we did find a policy that my dad had. And it was, in fact, valid. 
and there was money there, and we did get a claim. He said, but you know what? My sister and I still don't talk to this day. And he said, I never want that to happen to my kids. I don't want to be taken advantage of. I want to make sure I get the right thing, and I never want that to happen to my kids where they're fighting over something that I could have taken care of. And I said, Michael, thank you so much for opening up and sharing that with me. I really respect that, and I appreciate it, and now I understand what was going on here. And I didn't take take up my material. I just looked at him and said, Michael, if we can help you put the protection in place where you are guaranteed that this will never happen and your kids will know where the beneficiaries, uh, where the benefits are going and what the money's allocated for, and this is guaranteed, so you never have to worry about that. So you have peace of mind, and they have peace of mind. Is that something you'd like me to help you with today? And he said, yes, sir. I said, okay, Michael, let's focus on doing that. And then from there, we finalized the application, and my agent just sat there, and uh, we took care of it and left. And we got in the car, and my agent, uh, the new agent said, I didn't think that was going anywhere, man. That was, I just wanted to leave. I just wanted to leave. And I looked at him, and I said, you know what? Most agents would have left. Guys, sometimes you have to go there. Sometimes you have to be willing to have the tough conversation. So as I wrap up this video, I want to say this to you. You need to practice your presentation at home. You need to be willing to have tough conversations and ask yourself, what's the toughest conversation you've ever had? Maybe you can drop in the comments below on this video and say, this is the, the general context of a tough conversation that I've had and how it ended up. But here's what I want you to ask yourself. Why do we need to have these conversations? Why? Why do we need to have tough, challenging conversations? Number one, it allows for real emotion to come out. Number two, it allows you to see the real person. Number three, it allows you to see the real obstacles that are there that you need to overcome. And then lastly, it allows you to address the five real reasons why people don't buy, which is no trust, no need, no want, no urgency, no money. All of those are slightly uncomfortable, but it allows you to address those five real reasons and then develop value listen and present a solution to your client's internal need and help them meet that. Stop being surface level. Stop being just up here, just knocking out the laydowns. Be prepared to have some tough conversations with clients and you'll improve every day, every week. You'll actually help more people. They'll thank you. They'll become lifelong clients that will take care of you as you're taking care of them. And you'll build a great book of business, you'll build a great practice, and you'll build a great profitable career. So if you like this video and this type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications. Don't forget to leave us a comment. That's how we know what is uh, on your mind and how we can facilitate and uh, help you better and answer more questions. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to us on any of the social media platforms at Life Insurance Academy. Uh, .org is our website, and Life Insure Acad on all the socials. Uh, hit us up there, send us a DM. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.